Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. We're back, I'm Stu Miniman here with Justin Warren and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's broadcast of VMworld 2017. We're the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Russ Reeder, who is the president and CEO of OVH. Russ, thanks so much for joining us. You bet, Stu, thank you. All right, Russ, so those of us who have been coming for VMworld for years said, you know, VMware, their cloud strategy, what a mess. vCloud Air, total failure. Now, I, I think you might have a slightly different viewpoint on uh, some of that, uh, you know, dynamic. So, uh, you know, for for audience that doesn't know, OVH, uh, you know, was predominantly a European, uh, you know, uh, cloud hosting provider, uh, part of the vCloud Air network, if if I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, tell tell us what brought you to OVH, uh, and uh, you know, what what what's what's your story on uh, the whole vCloud? Sure, Air well, thing? OVH, we're one of the largest infrastructure providers in the world. We're the fifth largest, uh, and we're the number one partner for or VMware over in EMEA, right? And so I guarantee if Pat Gelsinger was here, you wouldn't have thrown vCloud Air under the bus so hard, but uh, it's a great opportunity. We'll be on tomorrow, let's <laughs> yeah, see. Perfect, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, vCloud Air is a great opportunity for VMware, kind of launching it, working with the, some of the top enterprise customers in the world, some of the biggest of VMware, uh, launching a cloud strategy. But, VMware is more of a software play rather than an infrastructure player. We're one of the largest in the world. And uh, so when, when VMware called us and said, hey, one of our best in EMEA, we know that you're coming to the US, we think there's a perfect acquisition. And so when I sat down with Pat and, and talked about the acquisition, we said, look, we're about ready to come into the US with all of our force. We have 27 data centers around the world. We have an 11 terabyte network, three terabytes of DDoS capacity. I mean, we, we, and we're coming here with scale. And so uh, if we can add in two over 200, close to 300 employees that understand the space and, and about a thousand enterprise customers that are committed to VMware solution and then really care about great tech, it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, uh, what, what can you share? How many customers did you get for that? Yeah. And since OVH took it over, you know, wh where are things? What momentum? Yeah, so we have, have around a thousand enterprise customers, some of the some of the biggest names out there, and uh, so and a lot of those were the biggest names for VMware. You know, with that, we took uh, around uh, 250 uh, employees and uh, globally. So we now have the global vCloud Air uh, um, uh, infrastructure, personnel, and customer base. Yeah, so with a thousand customers, I mean, Stu, you, you sort of call that an abject failure. It's like, clearly there's some people who do like it, otherwise yes. you wouldn't have managed to sell. And there's significant a, business here, yeah. and they're really important customers to VMware. Yeah, so what is it that those customers really like about the vCloud Air solution? So, so what they like, just uh, uh, about, the, first it's VMware, right? So, so they really love the, 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 the flexibility that VMware solutions give them. With vCloud Air, they went to it to have more of a, you know, no vendor lock-in, more of a portable solution where they can migrate VMs from on-prem to off-prem and be a part of the cloud. Yeah. And, and so what, they, what, they, what they're excited about now with OVH is going to a provider that is we're very well known for high performance, great network, at the best value. And so coming to the US, what they care about is, you know, the US is 58% of the world market in cloud hosting. Very large market, 58%. And you have a number of very large hyperscale cloud providers. And OVH is the largest cloud provider that no one knows about in the US, but we're, everyone knows about us in Europe. And so the customers now are super excited about bringing that technology, and we've really reinvented the whole infrastructure cloud hosting market. And, and bringing that new technology into, and the green technology into the US. Yeah, Russ, I, 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 we've been watching kind of this, the, the colo you know, data center business, seeing a number of companies that have kind of exited, you know, think Rackspace, how they, they've changed Verizon, uh, you know, what they've done. Uh, I talked to some of your team uh, at the booth here at the show, mm -hmm. um, and they're actually excited about talking about the way OVH, you know, builds data centers. Can, can you bring us inside this? Because some people look and they're like, oh, if, if you're not spending five to $10 billion a year, you're probably sure. not in that business. Right. Um, once again, OVH, I think, has a slightly different viewpoint on this. Yeah, so, so we were founded by 
by Octav Klaba, who's an engineer, network engineer, uh, started building, building uh, hosting websites, and then started to build their own servers. And so now we are vertically integrated. We build our own servers, we build all of our, DDoS, our own DDoS equipment, we build our own data centers. Our servers are water-cooled and we have very strong R&D relationships with Intel and AMD and it allows us to crank up the, the processing speed with our, with our data uh, cooling capacity. 30% of the data centers are cooled by natural air, 70% are cooled by water, so when other very large, well-known companies are out there trying to put data centers in Alaska and on sinking them in containers. We have it figured out at scale. Mm -hmm. We have 27 data centers around the world. We're investing $1.5 billion in the next three years to have over 50 data centers. So we're doing it at scale, and our, our, our data centers are not only more high performant, but 50% more cost effective, and we give that, that cost savings directly back to the client. Russ, one of the things that when I talk to customers and you ask them about their cloud strategy, sometimes they say hybrid cloud, sometimes they say multi-cloud, but whatever they say, their strategy is different for every customer I talk to. Some are actually you know, federating or splitting up applications mm -hmm. between uh, different environments. Others are you know, workloads depending on, on where they have. What are you hearing from your customers? What are the you know, types of applications? And you know, I, I know it depends and it varies greatly, but you know, where is it that you have kind of, kind of the gravity of where customers are going and how do you fit into kind of the, the, the broader ecosystem? You know, Amazon's the you know, elephant in the room. Uh, I think the booth next to yours, if I, if I recall right. So Around how's that side. dynamic work? Yeah. yeah. They, uh, so, unless you're a very small business, you, uh, you, you need a hybrid cloud strategy. If you're, if you're only in one cloud provider, you should be very worried, right? We've seen multiple attacks, any kind of failure, right? And so, so a hybrid cloud strategy from even a, a medium and definitely enterprise is where they already are. And you can't, well, even if you're going to create a brand new application, that data is going to be somewhere else, whether it's on-prem or whether it's in another data center, instantly you have to think about hybrid cloud, right? We're kind of in that third generation of the cloud. First generation was Rackspace, a do it for me. Second genera generation was AWS, I'm going to do it. And now third generation is like, whoa, I just can't be in one cloud provider. I need to have multiple cloud providers. So based on my workload, who can, I need high performance servers, where can that go? I have a lot of traffic on my, uh, that, uh, on my uh, ingress, egress, and so what, what cloud provider should I use there? And so now you can pick and choose workloads and then also your da disaster recovery. You obviously should have that, not just in a different data center, but with an entirely different partner. Yeah, so question on, on the, what exactly is hybrid cloud? Because early on when people were talking about, well, hybrid cloud means I'm going to have some on site and I'm going to have some in the cloud as well. And we had the idea of cloud bursting, where it would be basically the same application and I'd have part of it move into the cloud mm -hmm. when I needed it to and then i turn it off. But people who tried that found out that's actually really, really hard. It seems to be that people are more choosing that I'll put this application on site and I'll put that application in that cloud and I'll put a different application over here. Is that what you see customers doing? And what does that imply when we have features that are available in one cloud that aren't in another? I'm thinking of things like Google's abilities in AI. Sure. That seems to be something people would like to do, but if my data is sitting over here, it's actually really difficult for me to port stuff across. So what are you seeing with customers in their application choice of location? So at the most basic level, right, obviously a hybrid cloud strategy is to leverage multiple cloud infrastructure providers for your enterprise, most basic level. But, but there, whether you keep the data on site and then maybe the application off site, that's really not a hybrid cloud, right? That's kind of like I've got my on-prem and my one cloud provider. Yeah. Hybrid cloud really comes into play when you're using everyone from OVH for a specific set of workloads. Maybe you have your disaster recovery here. Maybe you have your, your, um, your a whole set of enterprise workloads on OVH and you're using, say, you know, maybe IBM for a, a, a different workload or maybe your data set is in another colo facility. Uh, and so, so once you start uh, mixing workloads where the data is and having multiple cloud providers, that's more of where, where, where the definition is really evolving to, right? Because yeah. it's, kind of, it's definitely evolving. Yeah, so on, if I'm an enterprise who wants to do that, not a lot of people actually have the skills in-house to be able to do that themselves. Right. So they generally rely on partners to do that. Um, I'm thinking people like the global systems integrators, yeah. they tend to get involved in these kinds of deals. Is that something that you see OVH 
providing as well, or are you looking more to partner with, with other firms to help? Yeah, them make so that's that a great that? question. We're, we're a pure play infrastructure provider. We work really well with other systems integrators, okay. and this works very well with VMware's VCAN offering, where all the system integrators out there now that are, have found themselves competing with AWS and competing with Rackspace. Now that they're spinning up their managed services providers, all these great system architects that are used to sitting on the client, being that consultant, kind of helping with their hybrid cloud strategy. Now there's a little, they're competing with the offerings that they used to offer, right? So, right, so AWS and Rackspace are now have managed services. Yeah. We, we, we're not providing managed services. We rely on system integrators for that. Okay. Yeah, I actually want to, you know, put a point on that. So I, I bumped into AJ Patel, we're going to be talking to him tomorrow. It feels like the, it's actually been, the, the network has been invigorated some mm -hmm. since VMware no longer owns vCloud Air. You do. And right. so now it's VMware can focus on the ecosystem more. I've got a number of other uh, you know, hosting and service providers that, that we're talking to on theCUBE. So does that dynamic help VMware uh, and help you? Um, you know, what, what, how's yeah. that look? No, I think it helps everyone. It gives clarity, right? It gives clarity to the customer. That's what we're all here for, right? We're definitely a customer-driven organization. We focus on making sure the customers are successful. And, and, and so the customer really understands, hey, this is someone that is investing billions of dollars in global infrastructure, security and scalability. And, and then for a VMware uh, customer, they, they understand, okay, I can use VMware for all the, the great software, enterprise software scale that they provide. And as a VCAM partner, now I'm not trying to compete, I understand where, where I can play, and, and OVH, it's, it, we're very clear on what we do and what we do, don't do. So we're, st we're uh, big partners on the vSAN and the whole, v the, the, the uh, working with AJ Patel on the whole network to make sure those resellers now see that they can actually make more money with, with the vCloud Air on OVH. Right, so things like the, the Cloud Foundation, the, that, that you're, I'm assuming that, NSX, you're oh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, all, all tied in. Yeah. How much joint engineering work uh, do you do there? We're working very closely with, with all, all the teams over at VMware, so I mean, you, you, whether it's uh, HSX or, or on the, on the vCloud Air side, we, that already has a lot of technology built in, and now VMware's productizing it, so our engineers have to work together. So we're, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Yeah, is there, is there anything in particular at the show that's really caught your attention? Because you were saying earlier that this is pretty much your first show in yeah. the VMware ecosystem. Yeah. So what stood out to you from that you've seen at the show? Yeah, I, I think what stands out most are the customers that are really, I mean, we're talking about hybrid cloud, but there have been so many customers that really are looking for hybrid cloud. And that you know we all have been a part of the cloud for so many years, and that they're now just migrating workloads off of on-prem. Yeah. I mean, it's like every year I have to pinch myself, like really, are there still 65% of workloads that aren't in the cloud? Yeah. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, do you, what do you think that end state's going to look like though? Because I, I question whether it's going to be 100% in the cloud, because I mean, we have people, customers still have mainframes. They, it's not most of the market, but they still exist. And th there are plenty of, well, I call them heritage systems that are out there they're very difficult to move, and often the upside of moving it isn't worth taking the, the risk. In the future, there will definitely be 100%. That's like saying that we need a fire in every house to keep it warm, Okay. right? I mean, it's it, it, everything will be in the cloud in the future. And then you have to differentiate based on the quality of service you're getting, yeah. right? The, the, it, what's the SLA? Yeah. Uh, is If I choose you, can I not choose someone else in the future? The vendor lock-in is pretty scary. Yeah. You know, but without a doubt, you know, as companies are spinning up, and you look at these startups now, yes, this is a long time. This, you know, it may take, it may take 100 years for GM to be totally in the cloud, right? But, right. but the, you, you, have, you have such vendor lock-in now that these startups and you look, have, are, are learning that they can be 100% in the cloud, and then how do I work with different cloud providers not to be locked in with them forever? It's been a big issue using other PaaS offerings are good and bad. So you, sh you, can, you have to be very careful to let your engineers just go off and start spinning up services. Mm. Yeah, uh, Russ, the last thing I want to ask you, you, you talked about, you know, we talked a lot about the, the VMware partnership. Uh, I know you said you've got some, some networking capabilities. 
What other cloud services can people you know, tie into? And I, I'm curious, the public clouds, is there a direct connect from your offering? Yeah, yeah, so, like that? so we have, uh, we've got some great offerings. Obviously, we're the world's largest player in the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure bare metal player. And so, so we have tremendous automation and everything is redundant and backed up automatically. And then we build all of the other solutions on top of that. So we not only have now vCloud Air, we've been a vSphere provider for, for, for seven years now. We have uh, OpenStack provider as well for the people that do want a public cloud, more of an open play. A lot of retail companies out there that don't want to go to AWS that are looking for more of a kind of an open source public cloud offering as well. And we've been a great partner there. Okay, so a lot your services. I'm just curious. Do you plug into you know other clouds like you know Azure, you know AWS, so, so or there's you not know, a specific API services? that we've built to okay. plug in, but we definitely have our 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 philosophy and our culture is a, a portable, open, free internet. Okay. So we don't we don't lock anything down. Sure, right. I understand. All right, mm. Russ Reeder, really appreciate you Great, thanks, joining Steve. us. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on the progress. We bring OVH to the U.S. and uh, yeah, maybe we'll ask Pat Kessinger tomorrow. <laughs> uh, you know his opinion on it uh, yeah. today, and you know some some of the criticisms. All right, uh, for Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with lots more coverage here at VMworld 2017. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>